Hello, welcome to the final wrap up session. Um, this is what we discussed in group one. The group was uh, Maria Joa, Melaine, myself, Tom, and Reuven. We, we had a long discussion and realized in the end that we'd actually started with the last questions first. We were that tired, but um, it actually worked out quite well in that sense. So there may be some lap over and I'm not, not sure it's incredibly stringent, but let's, let's go through. Um, what would be an achievable goal for heritage sample archive data sharing by 2030? Um, we thought fundamentally not to forget the continuation and development of ICROM and Partners Initiative. The statement of significance to become an established requirement, to communicate, communicate the initiative vision and encourage further cultural heritage collections and archives to join and participate toward creating a sustainable user community and creation of interop interoperable systems. What are the steps to achieve these goals? First of all, the goal of sustaining momentum um, the steps to maintain institutional support um, to back the continuation and development of their common partner institutions, an ongoing cooperation. Um, this is a slightly re repeating what we had there, but these are the steps to do it. To use a common statement of significance guidance document to communicate the importance of defining collection archive identity via the production of these SOSs. To kickstart joint activities, that's something that came out of uh, this morning's discussion, particularly from uh, uh, Ruben, um, just to, to start through practical collaboration between institutions, begin the process, the activity of integrating and sharing data between partners. And once this is up and running, and they, there are, there are these, these models there, um, Fenella mentioned this as well this morning, um, then maybe we can extend uh, the partners and outreach and advocacy to policymakers, etc. et um, Another thing we thought was good, although we're all tired, we thought these, this workshop was fantastic. So thank you, uh, all the, the organizers from ICROM. We thought there should be repeated workshops on different themes uh, ongoing to achieve the goals. Um, the steps to achieve the goal of data and knowledge sharing, and it's not just knowledge sharing, of course, as we discussed this morning, it's the generating of new data and knowledge through that very sharing and use. Um, to break the goals down into manageable, achievable steps. To adopt a principle of doing, a quick and dirty approach, not delaying, not seeking perfection. Learning by doing, for example, by producing case studies involving collaborative data sharing, and that's something that Fenella again mentioned this morning. Development of standardized systems via working groups. So in other words, this is part of the breaking it down into bite-sized chunks. Part of that would be the survey and inventory of current metadata use. And then there's a whole stack of things like definition of multilingual terminology, minimum um, metadata, minimum documentation standards, advisory guidelines. These might range from the ethical to the flowchart and policies, procedures, et cetera and including research and development of APIs. Um, I didn't know what an API is, but Ruben's told me all about them, but uh, an application program interface. What opportunities already exist? Uh, existing data sharing platforms, initiatives, sectors, disciplines, et cetera, that could help achieve this goal. Um, survey of related networks or initiatives in other disciplines. Um, we also had the, the example from uh, Lewis uh, uh, yesterday, um, whether we were looking at biology, medicine, wherever it might be. Um, and also to look at the current resources from existing um, cultural heritage networks, infrastructures, other initiatives, Rio, for example, and then through to um, different countries like Decolt in Germany, um, for, the, for the museums uh, of Dusseldorf in Germany and the DB heritage here that we have the poster of uh, from Portugal. Leverage or taking inspiration from other disciplines and from uh, cultural heritage related standardization initiatives, such as um, Triple F, I think, is that Ruben? Ru triple? triple? Oh. To, oh, it looks like double IF, but anyway, but anyway, whatever this is, um, we should we should um, take inspiration from it. And um, 
Do you want to explain what it is, maybe? I think what we're all saying here, and I'm sure the other groups would be the same, we, we, we don't want to reinvent the wheel where, where it's necessary. So to employ existing standards, for example, EU standards for procedural, I'm sorry if I say EU, and, and uh, there are many standards, of course, but the EU standards for procedural sampling, um, and then other world standards uh, like the Getty AAT and the period, oh, periodo. What are the key research areas in heritage samples archives? What do they, sorry. What are key research areas and heritage sample archives? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, aiming for interdisciplinary towards transdisciplinary research from humanities, the natural, and the formal and the applied sciences. By formal sciences, if it's not familiar with you, I'm really thinking about things like mathematics, statistics, and this sort of thing as well. Um, and not to think about these as um, just uh, separated things, but see if we can work together and together to inform cultural heritage understanding. Um, for example, with, whether that be in heritage art history or conservation or re restoration or whatever. And of course, to improve our decision-making through this understanding with these other, with these other um, uh, specialists. What are good ways to enhance this contribution? Um, education and training, we had to start there, but um, education and training is always a good way. Communication and sharing, research, development, and innovation. So new tools could come out of this, even though we're looking to um, not to reinvent the wheel. This is where we started. The world is changing fast. What key changes might affect heritage sample archives in the future? We're thinking up to two, 2030. Um, we think, once again, we shouldn't forget the impact, hopefully, of the ICROM and partner, this partners initiative. So this, this could have a big, Big effect, hopefully. Um, changes in um, economy and social contact con context. We're in a very difficult period uh, in the world at the moment uh, of rapid rapid change. Um, changing resources um, and the need for having some sort of sustainability um, of what we have. Um, Changes in working practices over the years. We've seen that through COVID, of course, but changes in working practices, maybe the, the, the ability for people to work together in different ways. Risk management we, we had before, and I think that that needs to, um, to take account of these things. We started off by discussing the impact of climate change, for example, on these things. So that's why we have the risk management uh, disaster planning because things will happen between now and 2030 that will affect certain archives. That's what we thought. Technological development, for example, the use of AI technologies and um, Reuven mentioned here, the content-based image recognition, uh, for example. These are just examples. And because of this sort of cascading down from technologies that uh, there should be broader accessibility for these technologies for even smaller institutes and other people. Um, what could be a future vision for heritage sample archives? Um, improved infrastructure and uh, discourse forums for networking. Uh, sharing a common purpose for data share, sharing and improved knowledge. Um, we thought picking on a, up again on some things that um, Tom and Tanella were discussing in the in the so-called around table discussion um, where this notion maybe of support and nurturing role for larger established institutions to support smaller ones or indeed the establishment of new archives so a nurturing role um, ICROM and partners uh, initiative um, connecting collections um, more collaborative work 
this is just a list that we compiled, as I say, I haven't gone through them. Uh, see, this, this was a long, this was this morning when we finished these. Enriched documentation, the, the notion of, 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 of improving um, the quality of documentation, whether it's the improvement of, of, of photography or of multispectral imaging or of 3D, whatever it might be, to improve that, that richness. And again, with analytical data as well to improve the resolution. Um, uh, future statement of significance, I don't think we really discussed that anymore as to what the future vision could be, but that we wanted to have that established. Um, broader access to new imaging and analytical techniques. And for these nets to dig down deeper, but also go across different collections as well. So digging down deeper into, into information and also spreading wider. So that was, I think about it, oh no, a few more. What actions need to be taken now to make this vision achievable and sustainable? Joining together like we've done here, like the initiative uh, is, is doing it with, with these um, workshops and with these meetings, joining efforts, creating community, improve awareness and communication, involvement in decision-making, management of best practices for safeguarding and for using. And then the observation is, yes, the connecting collections yeah. and uh, collecting connections. So that was, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to summarize the, the work uh, in uh, the group number two, which uh, disappeared during the afternoon person by person, but we, we are here with uh, Sara Sofia. Um, and the, the work have been done by Art, Sara Sofia, Anna, and, uh, and myself. So it was a very nice discussion. And we have organized the slide with the, the key question in red and the, the, the possible answer in, in black. Uh, we have mixed up a, a little bit the, the answer. So we, we, you will not find the session number three because we have contributed it in other points. So starting for, from what would be an achievable goal for heritage sample archive data sharing by 2030, which uh, seems uh, quite far, but maybe it will be very fast uh, here. I think that we have started a network. We are, we are the network and we are the starting point. So that is a very, very good result. And to start and to make more stable the starting point, uh, Today I've seen the register I've never seen before. So it is a, a nice idea. And I think that we have to start filling that for sure. Then a possible point uh, is in involving new partners. Uh, um, for example, I'm thinking to partners in Italy, which I can know better. Uh, the Istituto Centrale per il Restauro e Opificio delle Pietre Dure, for sure they have an archive. I don't know if they will be able to, to share and to make a common work with us, but I can also think to some CNR institution like, like mine and uh, for all, all the rest. So any, any, every one of us can involve some, someone else. Uh, I think that we have to think also to the feature of their archive because the archive we have seen, they, they could be different. Uh, I'm referring to reference archive, uh, model samples and mockups and whatever. Uh, then you, you see, and yesterday also we saw that uh, we can uh, refer to a possible platform, Iris, uh, uh, R Club and uh, uh, whatever else. What are the key steps to achieve this goal? Uh, we can define better our group, of course, and uh, we can uh, ask ourselves what could be the next, uh, the next appointment, the next point. Uh, I don't know if a meeting online or a conference, uh, because uh, Art, for example, suggested to organize a conference to be more open to the other, the other people every second year. And we have uh, a scheduling uh, already. Um, then going to, Publishing a proposal of guideline. I think we have enough material if we want to uh, follow the, the route uh, to publish a guideline by, by ourselves in a peer review journal or otherwise involve international or national standard bodies 
uh, as a, uh, has been told many in many different ways during these days, uh, like for example, the, the, the SEN, in order to draft a guideline document, I recall that the SEN 346 as a working group uh, specialized and devoted to terminology and guideline. Uh, so we can uh, ask them if they want to be involved, taking into account that the SEN activity is quite a slow activity because they draw a, a business plan in three years and they have already um, delivered the business plan for 2021 to 2024. So one possibility is in uh, being inserted in the next one, but one possible thing is to ask, for example, ICROM, a so-called liaison to, to SEN, so that they can, they can, someone of us can take part of the group. This is the possibility, this is the possible route. Of course, we are stressing the funding issues, and then the training for a possible curator, scientist, computer science, archivist, the human, science, the human resources is a necessary step. What opportunities already exist? This workshop community already exists and we have to, to start with this. And then possibly we could uh, uh, up, um, not, not us of course, but someone that we know uh, could ask for an application for one of the uh, PhD program uh, we are connected with uh, such, for example, Tech for Culture in University of Turin and the one in Milan Politecnico. Uh, session two, research opportunity. What are the key research areas in which Heritage Sample Archive have a contribution to make? Um, we, we took advantage by our uh, former experience uh, um, thinking with, to the work we are doing with the, the Milan Polytechnic and with the Serena Benelli. We are trying to apply new analytical methods, uh, more accurate, more sensitive, more precise to samples uh, taken and collected during the 90s, for example, in, in, the, in the last supper. And working on, on those, we will see the problems. And for example, we have already started and most probably the cross-section embedded in the 90s now are sticky. So one problem is in fluorescence in investigating them by Raman or in, in observing them in the uh, scanning electron microscope because they release product and they go in the column. So it is not really a good thing. So we, we, we have to solve this problem. <clears throat> uh, otherwise, going back to model samples after a long period of natural aging, this could be quite a, a challenge, but it, it could be very interesting. Or new studies about the K pattern, rate and mechanisms. We were thinking especially on black crust, for example, oxalate films to be studied uh, uh, with these new methods and implement the system to organize physical and digital archive parts. Uh, this is strongly connected with the next point. What are good new ways to enhance this contribution considering the physical, digital and human aspects? Of course, to organize both by a physical point of view, the samples, but even the, the database, the, the metadata, the archive in order to facilitate the access. And to take into consideration the possibility to make research on heritage sample archive when applying to next project calls. This could be uh, a possibility to be uh, built in, uh, in, in our uh, university. Thank you. So um, even us, we started from the from the end, <laughs> and so we start with the with the greeting, the final greetings. So um, this is the group, and uh, me, Andrew, Teresa, Margarita, and Rebecca. And I also would like to thank, in particular, Rebecca because of this very nice <laughs> PowerPoint uh, uh, images. So um, it was true, we started from the last question. So a vision for the future for Heritage Sample Archive in 2030. And we identified the first question and the second as in the first that can be some problematic issues. So the, you can see here in 
uh, red and the green one, the uh, potential. So the um, problematic issue in the, in the future, in the, in the next 10 years will be, for example, change in interest, in interest or decreasing awareness in several or more than one institution, maybe considering other priorities before uh, this one the possibility um, or the risk to dissociate, for example, knowledge, but also data from uh, the data from the sample <coughs> or the physical material with the, from the data. Crisis, as was already um, mentioned from the other group, doing nothing, which is also a possibility. So we, we just left, we just leave the things as they are because we know all of us are already uh, very much um, busy with many stuff, so can be a possibility. Um, technological change, so um, to have some uh, platform that are not more or some uh, um, as also sample holder, as uh, also Antonio mentioned, that can be um, aged in, so no, no, uh, that cannot be used anymore which are on the contrary the potential um, of the what can be done in the next 10 years what what can happen um, so the technology can evolve so uh, some technological change can help to um, for example sharing better the material so with the introduction of new software or hardware advances and so for example to become possible to um, manage more data together and also with lower, techno lower technological expertise required and also easy tools to be managed maybe in uh, more open fields. Our group uh, um, in particular would like to stress the importance to develop or to try to use uh, um, open data sources, not because a big company just hold everything and uh, this is, can be another risk. Um, another possibility is, is to build expertise at university, so to um, develop best practice that can be uh, so moving from now, going, uh, going on uh, building on, on what we have today. Um, to have a, a decentralized, so for example, we were, um, one idea was not to have a group which is a leader and all the other like um, planets around him, but several group leader that can be um, maybe territory based. So in order to have a more um, transoperability of uh, data and of uh, movements of data. And this can be uh, so a possibility in this way to involve more institution. Um, and we will see also in the next slide how we can imagine this. And then another possibility is uh, to um, grow uh, the interest on uh, heritage sample archive and also the growing or the group working. So this can be a possible vision so in which larger members can be the um, communicator for inspiring and uh, maybe guide a smaller group in order to have this um, um, more participatory um, participation process to be announced. Um, so which can be the vision for the Heritage Sample Archive and the action plan. So what are the goals and how we can get there. So the goal can be to be resilient. So to try to make our collection uh, in, or, in a way that they can respond to potential crisis. So to be, to think the potential uh, crisis um, in advance. So in order to mitigate the risk connected with the future crisis. Um, the inclusivity and in order, yes, to, as we have already said, involve the smaller communi uh, community. So trying to lower the cost, the license expertise, um, removing barriers and, um, and so everyone small and large can benefit and be involved. This can be an important goal according to our group. Knowledge and training, um, 
so for students uh, among university, uh, local communities, but also um, in enhancing the interdisciplinarity, so involving also groups uh, um, that come from other disciplines, as also was mentioned before, so for example, humanities and um, uh, and yes, to change also a little bit the point of view. Uh, dissemination and network, so to communicate, um, in order yes, to communicate strategies to different groups, uh, which is connected to the, with the previous point. Mm, then which can be the action? So first starting from our own, because we will feel a little bit embarrassing because our own sample archive is, quite not order at, uh, at the moment. So just each group can start from each own archive in order to implement uh, the management of it, uh, review the experience and share the experience uh, with the other. And, in, and then while this process is a little bit more, um, uh, more fluid, try to help nearby and uh, local groups as also Antonio mentioned. So um, maybe connect other group that we know um, close to ours, um, connect and interact with uh, different platform like regularly as we have done in, in these years. And so of course we need someone who, <laughs> who, who lead all these, uh, who, who take us strict to the, to the deadline. May also, this was also mentioned, um, um, set up a collaborative project in order to be a pioneer to see how, how can be the potential to give example or best um, good example to the other and also to see which can be the limits and to how to uh, overcome that. And then don't give up. So just try uh, because, of, okay, these, um, uh, these initiatives are not financed for the moment. So it's a big effort sometimes to find the time and to just uh, cut uh, some uh, small space to, to participate by trying to do it. Uh, what would be an achievable goal for heritage and archive data sharing? So this was the first uh, question by 2030. Um, active, growing, and up and keep up to date the register. So try to register and to uh, we hope um, for uh, to have this done in in the next year. So not so uh, far away in the times so in 2030. Maybe we can. Um, thing to it um, closer in time um, to develop common based models to yes to be um, to be shared platform forums that allow to identify and work in subgroups probably um, to um, to trace a perimeter in which uh, more uh, maybe similar group of archives and research group can collaborate in order to um, maybe favorite the, to use these uh, common archives. Develop set of keywords. This was a big discussion between us because we can imagine that it's easy to say, but very difficult then to be agreed on. Uh, basic functioning uh, of model system for smaller communities and test and review the document and processes that so all the documents that can be, uh, for example, provide or uh, make it available or publish should be some documents that are not fixed so they, that can be that can be developed during um, while the process is evolving which can be the interdisciplinary field in uh, that we, we have imagined. Of course, we just take the one we know better because of our the, the expertise of the group. So archeology, span art history, conservation science, material and natural science, museology, paleontology, sociology also can be interest to involve in and technical art history, for example. What are good ways to enhance this <clears throat> contribution? So try to find and make resources um, available. Try to use open data access through repositories where it, it is possible to have some um, PID, so some uh, identified for, for the samples. Extend to and support education, 
implement the sampling plan for the future project. So for example, as we have to provide during the writing of research project, the, the data management plan also to provide the sample data management plan, which can be uh, so starting with this. Uh, and then we also um, talk um, a lot about dissemination and communication. So how to be to open to a wider public. So how we can use the new technologies to uh, make some, uh, because when you talk about archive science and, and, and sample, maybe people are not so interested. So find, because each sample is a document, but it's also, um, it can tell a story. So try to start from the story to make it more attractive and more interesting for, uh, for people. Um, so including narratives as a part of dissemination. And get up also another suggestion could be to get active on the International Archives Day, the 9th of June. Thank you very much. Okay, so first of all, thank you very much. It's like exactly how groups works. So uh, the first question, what would be, uh, the, the working group is Agda, uh, Maria, Mata, uh, Luis, myself, Niger, Remote, and Alison. So uh, what would be an achievable goal for Heritage Sample Archive data sharing by 2030? Institutions are success, su we hope the institutions will successfully manage their own data, starting with our, ourselves, as already said. Data is digitized to some degree, some degree, we say some degree, so that at least something is already achieved, like digital catalogs, database, um, and we are targeting at least 50%. Within Heritage, uh, Heritage Sample Archives database, some key data, key metadata fields and their data formats agreed so that they can be interoperable at, at a later date. So please that we are, notes that we are putting the, the word some, because really we want to do something and some looks like a good word for, for now. Uh, so, it, exam for example, our archival standards and um, yes, ICA, for example, has already some suggested standards. So we have to think about our own minimum set of standards as well. Uh, tools are available for those who don't have a database yet. Yeah, there is lots of initiatives. And so we need guidance. We need tools so that smaller groups in small universities, small institutions have some sort of starting basis. Uh, some bilateral initiatives already underway from which other institutions can learn. Of course, we have possible big institutions which have already uh, gone further. Um, and some level of incorporation of sample archives data within their wider data collections. Like if you think about um, the United Nations, uh, in the 1970s, there are several groups they have to deal with uh, contract archaeology. If one example we had discussed, for example, in Brazil, we have the dam in the Amazon, two million objects have been excavated. And there is a, the country as signatory of uh, 1972 convention has to take care of that. So we can also jump into those initiatives and help them to promote what they are supposed to do and also get some you know, momentum on this. Um, what are the key steps to achieve these goals? One, get institutions to join the register, Ikram. So everyone, please visit and register yourself. Start small scale, small scale uh, at a bilateral level projects on data sharing. We can share data, even sometimes with our colleagues, <laughs> Establish required data fields and formats, limited, but co build consensus through heritage sample archives initiatives and share. If you have an open source tool that can be shared, share it. And we, we all have some initiatives, some trials. Uh, produce guides and share them through heritage sample archives initiatives, yes. Develop a joint recommendation. We can, the, because of the conventions and also based on the biodiversity convention, 
we can work together with other international organizations in order to promote something like uh, recommendations, which can also even maybe become protocols within the convention. So this is a way that we have to tie governmental responsibilities and our willingness to go further. Um, do this workshop again in five years or so to evaluate and share the progress made and take it further. Other groups, other previous groups have also suggested this on a different period proposals, but that's the main idea. Are you okay? Yes. Uh, what are good ways to enhance this contribution considering the physical, digital, and human aspects? Well, in terms of digital, minimum metadata fields, like in other fields, like the International Archives, uh, Council on Archives, uh, because organizations that have already a database, they can share their metadata. I mean, we can share our metadata, metadata so that we can see what's more common and then have like a map of those like words mapping, um, interlink archives. I think um, this is a, I mean, it's a dream, but it's possible it's gonna happen. That may, in the future, different institutions will have different databases, but you may have like artificial intelligence with robots running through all these and finding what would be common. I think this in, a, in, in, in terms of time, this would be possible. Um, in terms of human, data sharing requires trust. As we said, even with our colleagues, we can share. Bring people, people together. Link to other communities with sample archives. As we have already mentioned here, there are other communities like forensics, uh, the iso uh, stable isotopes, nuclear applications. If we think about uh, international atomic energy, there are already several shared databases. Organize an online seminar, inviting people from other fields to talk about how they got started. That's the same idea. Um, heritage sample archives in universities. It's the university field is really very dispersed in terms of how they handle their responsibility towards museum collections. Because besides the museum collections, we also have very important scientific collections and we have no training at all in terms of those scientists who are being trained by us and how they could handle, how it's our responsibility to share even and to organize what we've been working on and not just to leave something in a drawer and then 30 years later, someone opens that drawer and see that there is an important collection over there. And this happens, you know that this happens. So universities, they can help us and they can be helped as well, depending on how big their problem is. And by working together, and there are university networks, several ones, so that we can maybe sometimes, depending on the situation, get to them through someone who's occupied positions, for example. Um, so finally, uh, capture tacit, no, tacit knowledge, record testimonies with those who have managed archives. I mean, we, we can bring our own experience and have the experience from others as well. Oh, so finally, future vision. What key changes might affect heritage samples archives in the future? 2030. Climate change is an issue. We have increased threats to existing sample collections, but also an enhanced growth for sample archives. Things are disappearing, you know, not just small things, but big things and landscapes and several immaterial and material cultural heritage. So an avoidable loss of cultural heritage may necessitate collecting samples for the future. Need to read to be ready to respond to those threats. Greater focus on risk management, which is gonna help us how to handle this in time. Um, increase the digita digitization effort with all of the care that should come with that, you know, in terms of preservation, long-term preservation, refreshment, access. Uh, and finally, digital preservation guidance and long-term strategies for digital preservation, exactly. Uh, XMI, inter -Paris guides, and may need to make more. Well, I need help for this. Thank you.
Yes. And we also, we, we've also discussed about training, you know, that we need to provide dissemination of training. Yes, sorry. <laughs> uh, so what could be a future vision for Heritage Sample Archives? All Heritage Sample Archives are registered on the ICRAM register. Each Heritage Sample Archive is recognized by each custodial institution with a commitment to its long-term preservation. So we have to talk to our superiors and they have to see us and, our, and this problem must be clear for them. There is common recognition of the responsibilities involved in collecting and managing heritage sample archives as an essential part of responsible research. So sampling is serious. Collecting is serious. It's not something that I'm just gonna start tomorrow without having any guidance or any more stable solid basis. And people must be aware of that. Um, the majority of heritage sample archives around the world meet basic standards of archival management so that, you know, as part of this dissemination, we can cross, cross divulgate the minimum, the basic standards. Archives are managed by designated individuals who have the relevant skills to do this job properly. We have professionals well-trained to do this, or we can talk to professionals well-trained and add to their training these specific tasks and these specific problems. Uh, new samples are collected responsibly. This is really true. No future mass. So the mass is corrected from the very beginning which makes it a bit easier to deal with in the future. Archives are digitized and shared so information can be accessed. And long-term preservation strategies, strategies are in place. So finally, what actions need to be taken now to make this vision achievable and sustainable? One, disseminate ICRAM register. This is what we are doing We're right online to all over the world produce and share guidance tools, get other professional organizations on board because there are many and depending on how we discuss, we can profit from each other and provide training, not just for managers, but also for researchers and students as part of research skills training. This is very, very important. We all agreed on this and the other issues as well. Thank you. Thank you again for the good work. So um, here you can find our uh, ideas of today summarized. Uh, I will present you uh, that of uh, session number one. We try to uh, answer to these uh, easy questions. Um, uh, what would be an uh, achievable goal for Heritage Sample Archive data sharing by 2013, in 2013? Uh, so, share online register from ECROM, as everyone of us uh, told before, and uh, other location-based learning information that could include the description of the sample collection, images, uh, uh, additional metadata, uh, of course, in levels of progress, uh, step by step. So each partner uh, could start uh, where uh, they are, uh, add uh, and learn from uh, uh, other participants, or, uh, other uh, institutions uh, who, had, who are at, um, at different uh, levels, at different steps with their work. So. Uh, what are key steps uh, to achieve uh, this goal? First one, review partner online websites to see connection, point to other collections that have similar uh, materials. Uh, I think this is important. Uh, after descriptive, add uh, standardized, standardized images and uh, searchable metadata. Uh, images are uh, very important also to share knowledge 
uh, for example, passing uh, over the problem of the language. Mm -hmm. We yeah, reflected sure. about this question. Uh, so multilingual search terms to look for link and the point to similar collection, uh, minimal natural language and English. Mm, natural language is important. We have not to um, eliminate, uh, uh, not to delay the natural language, but we should try also to propose an international language that for a scientific field is, of course, English. So we can safeguard and update samples archive to share. Then uh, micro groups uh, who work, uh, as I told before, uh, work on developing the terminology, nomenclature, SCNN, uh, for specific materials, sample type, and uh, we could see what's out there by including uh, specific disciplines. Um, so across discipline teams, including uh, IT, conservator, uh, heritage scientists, uh, and so um, pro pro professionals from different uh, and specific uh, disciplines. Uh, thanks to uh, the important uh, leverage developed uh, IT platforms, so to um, expand uh, uh, with uh, this uh, uh, Heritage uh, Samples Archive initiative uh, partners and uh, add research data in, uh, in row if possible. Um, maybe we, uh, most of all, for uh, historic uh, archive, there are uh, PDF uh, documents because of um, um, raw data aren't uh, available. We should uh, um, um, re, uh, try to transport old documents into digital ones, but it's a long process. Uh, so PDF is not so bad uh, to garner inter interest, share historic and new data. Uh, so what opportunities already exist uh, that could help uh, achieve this goal? Sure, leveraging uh, existing platforms as uh, Getty, LC, uh, Math, uh, I can't <laughs> pronounce it, and to see uh, what works for each collection um, sample type. Uh, so the, um, we could apply teams um, cross disciplinary. Uh, trying to reach out uh, disciplines and engaging the new partners. It is not a new issue, but we share this uh, issue. And include the research institutes, academia, cultural heritage organization, and STEAM, uh, so science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, as center to encourage uh, others to join and share uh, their collection, sample collection. Um, another uh, slide. <laughs> ah, yeah, this was the, the task, uh, which uh, could be a strategy uh, for uh, improved data sharing. Um, in our opinion, from our point of view, uh, cr to create uh, a funding strategy showing us all as, um, sh showing us uh, all as connected. Uh, consortium as a collective uh, to get support by leveraging partners initiatives to show value of current work and the broader impact. So potentially have partners reach out to specific calls for funding to separate specific aspects, for example, standardized metadata. More. Uh, work forward on uh, small double sections. Uh, doable, 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 sorry. Just something we can do. <laughs> doable and establish coordi a coordinator a figure to encourage uh, prog progress and uh, keep data processes and integrated uh, and uh, organized too. 
and uh, last but not least, uh, commit to linking and connecting related uh, collections. So collecting connections. <laughs> we could. Uh, session well, number two. Uh, the session number Let's, two, I'll be okay. presenting our, our results. Okay. Uh, what are the key research areas in which heritage sample archives have a contribution to make? First, learn about historic materials, construction techniques from samples that are only remains of the original object. Capture new knowledge from one-time samples with new techniques, especially non-invasive. Uh, teaching, education, and why cultural heritage is important. Assessing new technologies, verify innovative approaches and methods with respect to specific materials, except on given glass versus textiles, to optimize technique and knowledge information that can be gained. What a good way to enhance this contribution, uh, considering the physical, digital, and human aspects. Well, let's go basically link, link data with reference samples so we can reach out other how to use physical reference samples to verify, characterize, and access degradation or assess usable digital raw data for comparison. Establish human, human networks as we're walking around here, collect, collecting connections and connecting collections. Uh, educating of early career and emerging professionals to engage with and promote the sample archives and use them. Register representative from early career, cultural heritage and academia and etc. to promote and be that country institution ambassador. Then create a network for those for their career. Partners embed, partners embed ambassadors in the in their institutions for another country for a period, period of time, enhancing this proposal of exchange of knowledge. Using the ambassador network to share new communications and technology and strategies. Uh, and the task was a strategy, strategy to unlock research opportunity using heritage sample archives. First of all, get it online. Second, establish the steps to reach the goals. Then create, them, create this ambassador program to encourage network, institutional linking and increase knowledge of an importance of sample archives. And lastly, transfer of knowledge and establish an upcoming person to manage the institutional sample archives. Assure continuity, that's important, and reduce loss of institutional knowledge. And on the third session. So, the world's changing. What's going to happen? <laughs> so, we, we just want to note that we're a very positive, optimistic group. And so, you know, we're going like these positive, negative things, but we've got lots of positives. So, just bear with us on this. So, we've got to raise awareness. Um, of why they're important with as been said with man-made wars um cultural heritage the sample might be the only thing that that exists and uh you know this changing geopolitical situation next terminology um changing in the values of the community uh, so hopefully there's greater respect for what we we have that the natural aging of our samples as i think uh you mentioned um that these these might actually be there and they can actually help us recreate what's happening in the climate change and maybe we can then create new stabilization techniques for um, certain materials and that may mean that we're prioritizing as Nick was saying like monuments and stone that are being impacted more by pollution by change those reference samples might become actually more important and can be used for stabilization treatments because we have them that our previous our previous strategy, as you saw, for moving forward, um, co coordinating funding might actually allow us to, to enhance preservation and use. 
increasing numbers of displaced populations, sadly, may actually be able, this may be the one link to lost heritage. It may be just a sample, but it's still a tangible, sorry, I get upset about this. It's still a tangible thing that they can point to and reach out and learn about their, their culture. Um, it's been said new technologies, um, you know, that can be used. Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on, I couldn't quite see. Um, so the digital revolution, so not just uh, scientific technologies, but with this fast change, can we use what's out there to do an auto translate uh, to multiple languages, which would be, I mean, that's going to be here, I, I think we said 2027, we're expecting that, so that's what we thought we'll just translate to one language because mm -hmm. the rest will be done by us online by 2027. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the automated cataloging, I, we haven't quite got a date for that, but we're thinking about 27, 28 for that too. So AI learning, um, and I think uh, Luis was mentioning that too. And then technology, um, I've been working with colleagues in Africa. Our cell phones take awesome pictures. If we have a fairly simple, simple process for doing some of this work in smaller institutions, a quick capture, if there's an app that they can actually automate and capture metadata, that's where we think we're, we're going. There's a few negatives, we know. Um, changing values might mean there's a higher priority for using the space and resources for other things and our amazing, totally superb reference collections that we all think that the money should go towards. Um, the impact on storage and basements. So that, as we said, it's a private joke. You will have to ask Nick about that later. For those of us who don't have windows in our spaces, we, we commiserate. Um, Climate change can, might be faster than we think. We're seeing daily, I mean, this week has been an interesting experience. We don't know what's going to be here in five years time. It's, it's happening fast. And the challenges for funding um, due to other priorities. So what could be a future vision? We think that if we can have an accepted integration of sample archives into the whole cultural, the whole institutional collection, it's, it's a thing, right? It's not that thing on the side that these weird people have in their basements and they spend time going to meetings and talking. Um, integrate it. It's, it's up there and up front. And, and then the process of examining, treating or analyzing the item actually includes the responsibility of archiving those samples from that project at the time that you wrap up the project. You wrap up the report, you wrap up the samples. The interconnected sample and reference collections that we talked about, a sustainable online shared platform is a repository for the knowledge, using it as a place for continued education for future scholars um, and sort of more focus on the access and interaction with images of samples because we had a long discussion about how the image of something actually engages you often more than reading four pages of metadata and maybe it will get you interested in, into it. And then as part of that, you know, using that as a way of adapting the communication to do, to to diverse audiences, can we get the public more engaged so that a, a young child who's at school and only seven goes, hey, mum, this looks kind of cool, um, and visualizing it. Actions that we need to take right now. The first time we had this slide, it was really short. What actions do we need to do? It had lots and three exclamation marks, but then we thought we should probably put some more. So, <laughs> move forward incrementally, you know, as, as Ruben's been saying, and we've been chatting, that we make small aspects of the larger and we move it forward. Having all the partners, as everyone's been saying, register, uh, we thought we'd put a date up there, September 2022, sound good to everyone? <laughs> so, silly. Um, start with the descriptive metadata, add the images, support the natural language, add English as can be, uh, the micro groups to, as a lot of people have said, to move parts of this forward, leverage and share our developed platforms and use what's there and encourage a strong network of partners with funded components. Um, yeah, I was very fond of the funded aspect. <laughs> so this was the end of the morning. Uh, sorry, I missed one. This was the end of the morning. We were looking pretty happy and we gained Nick in the afternoon. So <laughs> we were a pretty happy group. So thank you. <laughs> And uh, it's now our task just to, to wrap up what I think has been a really fantastic three days of intense discussion. You know, those that have been here with us throughout, uh, 
think we certainly put you to work. <laughs> it's been great. And thank you really so much for, for your engagement, for your creativity, for your, you know, enthusiasm. enthusiasm of these last three days. And despite the heat, which is, it's been really, really wonderful. And um, I think it's, it's really, uh, you know, on behalf of, of Ecom, it really is our job very much to, to thank, you know, our hosts for the University of Everett and Everett Hercules Laboratory. Really, really thank you so much for, for everything that you've done um, to, to welcome us, to make us feel so comfortable um, the wonderful experience of being here for your beautiful university, for your wonderful town. It really, really was fabulous. Um, I think we should also thank as well the Getty Conservation Institute, who so very kindly you know, funded and supported this, and also the, uh, the Strauss Centre at the Harvard Art Museum. So thank you very much to, to them as well for their, for their support. I was just wondering, actually, Maria. And then I sang the university. Oh my goodness! So sorry. Yes, and also thank you very much indeed to uh, Dresden University of Fine Arts, and in particular Rebecca. Thank you so so much for all your. Yeah, and uh, really, um, uh, what you might not realise is that you know Rebecca has been with this initiative right from the very beginning, um, you know, uh, well, Milane was at the very, very, very beginning for the Mold <laughs> project, but when it became the Salvas Archive Initiative, then we've had Rebecca with us and she has provided us so much support and help. It's just been wonderful working with you. Um, so thank you to you. I actually just wanted to turn quickly to you, Maria, yes. just to, just get a few words from you as as an archivist, as a, uh, you know, okay. just, just a couple of reflections. No, in fact, I was thinking, because I am here the only archivist in the, no, in this, uh, mm. so perhaps I need to defend the, the archival <laughs> <laughs> No, in the sense that um, we were speaking today, the need of, um, no, yesterday I made a comment, you need an archivist on your life. You need an archivist on your archive. Um, an archivist or at least somebody who, a responsible person who may have some training on archival management uh, to be, to secure, I mean, to be sure that that uh, archive collection will be preserved and will be accessible to others. Uh, and also um, in the working group today, I was, because this is something that, um, uh, for example, for digital preservation is something that uh, is a principle, no? Uh, digital preservation has to start at the beginning, even before the record is created, the digital record is created. So for uh, samples, it's the same. Archival management has to has um, to be planned before the sample is taken. So you need to have the procedures already in place. Some to take sample, to sample for sample, no, and for um, arrange and catalog the samples, uh, linking the samples with all the analysis and all the records produced uh, during the sampling campaign. So. These are my reflections uh, as an archivist. And um, um, the good thing of this uh, workshop has been to establish, uh, to meet each other, no? to start establishing close collaborations, bilateral mm -hmm. collaborations, but also who knows in the future. Uh, and um, the register of uh, samples archives have been mentioned several times, but um, you cannot register now because this is still under development. 
So perhaps by September 2022 could be launched, but we are not sure. Mm. By the end of this year, we are sure that, sure that uh, it will be launched. So um, sample archive will be in the register by probably next year. And we hope that this is a good platform to start knowing what is what are uh, samples archives are uh, around the world and start connecting them in a very simple way. And mm -hmm. finally, because Milen told me to say, all the people that are interested in in the presentations and the, in the presentation, all the recordings will recordings with the presentations obviously will be available on the from YouTube. So mm -hmm. this is something that yes. people can catch up later. Mm -hmm. Yes, can I, I just want to actually, with regards to people joining, who have been joining online, and I'm also just thank you to them as well for, for taking the time to follow. And um, exactly, things will be available um, so people can, can take another look. Um, but I just also wanted to convey a message that we got in the chat this, this afternoon because it was quite nice. And it says, I hope it will be possible to have another workshop. <laughs> we might be a bit exhausted right now. <laughs> I hope it will be possible to have another workshop on Heritage Samples Archives earlier than five years from now. This really is a great event and initiative. And I just wish to convey my thanks to the organizing committee. So really, again, I, I want to say a big thanks to, to you guys, Ever, and I'd just like to turn over now to you to, to uh, give us some final comments. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon to you all. Three days of hard work, as it looks, okay? It comes to an end. It was a pleasure to have you all here in the University of Evra and some of you tomorrow in, in Evra. I didn't attend the, the work, but as for the two previous sessions and for the, your words, for sure it was a success. Such a brainstorm with all of you certainly gives an excellent output for this, uh, for this topic of conservation of, um, of collections. The collaboration of the institutions involved ICROM, Airbus, um, Dresden University, Getty, Harvard, and of course, all of your institutions um, show uh, the importance of a global thinking for a common uh, goal. And that is very, very good. I look forward to see the outputs of this presentation, of this work. On behalf of Airbus and the university, I just declared the availability to collaborate in future projects like, uh, like this. And uh, uh, finally, uh, I want to congratulate Alison Heritage, Maria Cavaco, Rebecca, that on the other side of the screen, we start to see each other for several, <laughs> several meetings. It's not easy to plan a, a workshop like this. And uh, by last, just let me thank to the team of Verkus involved, who dedicated a lot of time solving first and last minute uh, problems. To Mafalda Costa, Luis Dias, Sara um, Valadas, Pedro Barrulas, Teresa Braga, Susana Coelho, Antonio Candeias, thanks. And of course, Milen, for all the effort on this workshop, but also for the enthusiasm that we share with us with your attendees. Congratulations and thank you all. Okay, thank you. And tomorrow, 10 30. Okay. <laughs> so I believe that everything is said. So um, it's only a few words of appreciation. So I'm going to return now to Maria and to Alice, and it's our turn now. I would like very much to to a word of appreciation to Ikram, for you two, for all team, for in the, frame of, in the framework, first of all, of uh, the project, the Motor Collection project, it has been a privilege, and also for this broader initiative that uh, brought together here at Eric Kush and at the university, experts from all around the world with the same interests, the same uh, concerns, and uh, it was really a pleasure to, to be, uh, with you, all of you, these uh, three days, it was really brainstorming and it 
as Alison said, despite the heat, you came with an amount of volume, an amount of information that is really, really very, very precious. And so the workshop is really connecting collections, but I believe we had also here connecting people because we really, we start, uh, it's already started two years ago online and uh, now here, and I believe in the future, we are going to grow more and more and become more bigger and more uh, broader uh, in the world. I would like also um, to thank you, uh, they have already done, to the partners that have uh, generally spawned this uh, workshop. And I would like to apologize for some technical issues online, but as already they have already tell, everything is going to be shared. All the sections were recorded, so it's going to be available uh, in a short uh, period of time. And uh, um, at last but not least, I would like also to, um, uh, uh, to greet the local committee, the local committee, my colleagues, my uh, the researcher for Hercules Laboratory, that are also my friends, my dear friends, that uh, and in the direction of Hercules Laboratory as well, and all the people directly and and directly involved in the build up of this uh, workshop. Without them, it was not the same. So uh, thank you very much. So I'm going to finish. I'll speak in in the morning the first day, that is in Portuguese. So, boa tarde, foi um prazer e até breve. Tomorrow, tomorrow at half past 10 with Patricia and uh, at 12 with me and we go to Monserrat. Okay, we finish in the search. So thank you very much. <laughs>